My name is Najma Ata Okine, and I am a junior at the Gallatin School of Individualized Study. This summer, I traveled over 7,000 miles across the Atlantic Ocean to Kigali, Rwanda, to serve as a community health and key populations intern at Health Development Initiative. The scope of my human rights work was around designing a training manual to contextualize and address the key social, cultural, and health-based consequences that are facing sex workers in Rwanda. HEI is a non-governmental organization registered under Rwandan law. The members at HEI strive to ensure the right to health and provide the highest standard of care for all Rwandans, regardless of social, cultural, or economic status. Now, my specific duties at HDI was to identify, contextualize, and address a myriad of issues that disproportionately affect sex workers in Rwanda. A few of these issues include a disproportionate HIV prevalence, approximately 10,000 stats of the general population, testimonies of forced eviction, criminalization, unlawful detention, and difficulty with registering children with Rwandan, under Rwandan law, and discrimination in the familial, state, and social context. My vehicle response was a training manual that included a detailed overview of issues concerning sex workers, a, sensitive, a sensitivity training module for community health workers, a series of workshops to be rented by HDI staff and peer educators for sex workers, and a proposal of possible remedies, including mobile VCT and wellness counseling to increase access to healthcare for sex workers both in the city and in rural locations, increase access to legal aid, increase access to worker-based safe sex barriers, including internal condoms, and finally, recommendation to decriminalize sex work. Now, here you can see a few images. These are mostly just posters and a few projects that were seen around the HDI headquarters and kind of showed how there was a concentration of bridi bridging aid and human rights and health into the Rwandan society. Now, for the actual creation of the manual, I required the analysis of a few hundred resources. <laughs> Along with that, it required multiple interviews with human rights professionals, health workers, and sex workers in the urban population of Kigali. A majority of my resources that came from the more health-based side came from the Wanda Biomedical Center and the Ministry of Health, along with Project San Francisco, which was nice enough to allow me to interview some of their clinicians to talk about their experiences with sex workers in Kigali. After approximately 12 weeks of slaving around in a very warm office, I created a final manuscript known as the Training Manual on Health, Human Rights, and Sex Work, which is currently going through its 12th edit due to facts that I'm gonna talk about a little bit later. <laughs> now, a little brief reflection on this summer. One of the quotes that really got me this summer was from my direct supervisor, Dinika, who is the human rights officer at HDI, who said, there are no negative experience in human rights work, only positive and educational ones. <laughs> so one of my, pos so my positive experiences were really impactful to me. One of them being is having the opportunity to work under seasoned professionals who work in the global health realm. Being able to see them work and being able to work with them to create a long-lasting project kind of gave me a snapshot of what I hope my life will be as my professional and educational career goes on. Additionally, I got to meet one of the most graceful, intelligent, and tenacious group of people through the sex workers and peer educators who came to HDI to talk about the concerns that they have with their population. But I think what really hit me most was I got to dedicate three months of my life and create a project to create a good that could serve a population that has lacked visibility, been criminalized, and historically marginalized for years. And some of my educational experiences were mostly rooted in bureaucracy. <laughs> One of the biggest things I noticed is that getting project approval is pretty hard. Getting project approval for a group that has been criminalized, even harder. <laughs> it took me about eight weeks before I could even get any word of being able to talk about sex workers without interviews approved within the Rwanda. Additionally, working in a country with a pretty bad history <laughs> of upholding free speech was also very difficult. As you can see, with having a 12th edition of this manual, I still have to move, uh, remove about 80 or so pages that show criticisms to the state, which kind of showed me that sometimes when you want to help people, 
it's not going to happen quickly and it's not going to happen where it's relaxed, but it's a slow and long and highly rewarding process. Another barrier that I did face was a language barrier. Now, I speak English, tree, a little bit of French, and a little bit of Kenya Rwanda, which was easy enough to talk with health professionals, human rights professionals, fellow interns and staffs at HDI, but one to serve a population of sex workers that come from a very diverse background, not being able to sp speak fluent Swahili or to be able to speak fluent Kenya Rwanda left me having to use translators, and I felt as if I could have served and advocated for this population better if I had those language skills. But it also gave me a learning experience to know that if I'm going to go out in the field again, I will ensure that I have those language skills required so I could properly interact with the people that I wish to assist. Now, how did the international human rights framework help with my specific project? Well, once again, there are some positive and there are some negative impacts of this framework. One of the biggest positives I noticed is that hu international human rights framework, specifically from the UN, asserts the inalienability of human rights to all people, including criminalized groups. Now, in Rwanda, the sex work is criminalized, but being able to use the ethos and be able to use the authority of something like the UN or WHO to say that these individuals also deserve rights went a long way when speaking to members of global health organizations or parliaments. Additionally, certain suggestions from these international health organizations were very applicable in Rwanda. For example, there was a protocol by the WHO that was for how to reuse internal condoms multiple times through a washing protocol that was meant for Southeast Asian sex workers. But we found very popular with sex workers in rural regions of Rwanda because they found that instead of having to buy a condom every single time or trust that their client would have a condom, they could have a single internal condom and wash it five to six times over a period of a week and control their own safety. But unfortunately, there are also pitfalls to the idea of an international framework. It doesn't take into consideration the history of the country. Rwanda experienced one of the deadliest genocides only 23 years ago. Most millennials weren't even born in the country. They were born in Burundi or Kenya or Uganda. This means that the country has a level of geographical and social diversity that is different from countries in the nearby region and needs to be taken into account to make successful policies to address marginalized groups such as sex workers. Additionally, international human rights framework does not address the impact of religious and social environments in a society. To decriminalize sex work, it's a pretty controversial claim, especially in somewhere where Catholicism and certain moral practices run wild. We can change laws if we want, but it's not gonna change anything unless you can change the minds of the population you're working in. Now, this summer was incredible. It impacted me in ways that I couldn't even imagine. And Honestly, it changed my future. I decided to commit my life to assisting sex workers and victims of gender-based violence. So for the fall, I'm gonna be working with Red Umbrella Project and ACT UP to advocate to end the use of condoms as evidence-based arrest for sex workers. I've also been accepted to be a research assistant at Mount Sinai's Clinical and Translational Research Center and hope to work with Population Council to create a project that studies sex worker behavior and HIV practices in Kenya. For volunteering, I will be working at Restore NYC and Lifeway Safe House to work as a wellness counselor at a safe house for uh, women who were formerly trafficked. And finally, I actually have to run right after this presentation to get my certification to be a rape crisis domestic violence counselor at the Crime Victims Treatment Center at Mount Sinai St. Luke's. I would like to thank the Human Rights Department, Gallatin School of Individualized Studies, CGPH, members at HDI, and everyone who supported me through this path. And for anyone who's thinking of apply, please do, because good or bad, you're gonna learn a lot about yourself and you're gonna do a lot of real good. Thank you so much. <laughs>